This is the Mike Sunline podcast, episode number one. Once you know VBA, the sky's the limit. Welcome to the My Excel Online Podcast, the need to know Excel insights, knowledge, and tips brought to you by the experts that know them best. Are you ready to explore your full potential and get better at Excel? It's time to stand out from the crowd with your host, John Mikaloudis. G'day guys and welcome to the Mike's Online Podcast with your host, John Mikaloudis. In today's episode, we have an Excel expert who has one of the best looking Excel websites. He's the founder of the SpreadsheetGuru.com, which launched in early 2014. He maintains a very popular Microsoft Office blog that covers various topics in Excel, PowerPoint, Word and VBA. His mission is to guide his audience in ways that they can be viewed as gurus in their own work environments. Let's welcome to Mike's Online's inaugural podcast, Chris Newman, also known as Chris Macro in the online world. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Glad to be on. All right. Tell us more about yourself personally and your journey into becoming an Excel expert. My journey began back in 2011, and that's when I graduated college and got my first job. And I initially got hired on into a rotational program. And when I started, I didn't really know much about Excel. I didn't know what a VLOOKUP was. It was pretty poor looking back at it, uh, how, how little I knew. To make a long story short, I ended up getting into a position within the rotation where I was, I was taking over someone else's job. And the person was leaving in two weeks and the person had this ginormous file that had an absurd amount of VBA in it. And I had no idea what VBA was or what macros were. I mean, I was still trying to get a handle on what Excel was. And uh, it kind of put me in a situation where uh, this person was leaving at a very early date. And I I had to kind of teach myself how all this stuff worked. It, w- it was just a uh, very, very tense situation. And he didn't teach you before he left or he was, was he probably angry <laughs> that he was leaving? Or so was there, he, was he getting stacked? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I had to learn and this was kind of put on the back burner. Uh, so the file, all the VBA supposedly just worked, but you had to update it once a year and it was the middle of the year. So he didn't really have time to go over that part. So he's like, Oh, you'll, you can just update it once you get to the end of the year, you'll, you'll figure it out. It'll be easy. (laughs) And there, there were literally thousands of lines of code. And if you know anything about VBA, it looked like the person had just used a macro recorder and I mean, it had like every click, It it was very poorly written. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that wasn't good either. And I don't know, I just, I, I had to figure it out. Um, I joined some online forums and over the course of, I think I was there for eight months in that rotation, I just started learning everything I could about VBA and Excel. And I ended up rewriting the, the VBA portion of it, the computer code. And it, it was probably down to maybe a hundred lines. It was, it was a lot better, more efficient. And uh, through that experience, I just consumed so much knowledge on Excel that I kind of became known as this guru in Excel. And I was only there for eight months. And wow. I, I quickly rose to being the person to ask questions for in Excel. Imagine how, so imagine was, how bad your, your colleagues were then. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people in the corporate world, they have been in it for a while and they kind of didn't take the time to learn all these new technologies and yeah. and they they just kind of got by without um doing it. So it's a lot different when when you're younger in in today's world and you kind of have grown up with technology and you can see what it do and stuff interests you and you just kind of get addicted to it kind of, um, uh, that's, that's kind of the best way I can describe it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's very easy to kind of be known as that guru in your workplace. And that's kind of my, uh, mantra through my website is to let people know that this is attainable. It's, it's very powerful. And, 
um, my professional career has just grown because of it. And with all these online tools, you can definitely learn Excel these days, um, you know, compared to 20 years ago when, you know, the internet wasn't around or YouTube wasn't around. So all these people that are in these corporate jobs didn't have the exposure to Excel videos or Excel tutorials as they do now. I think they just work too much and they get caught up into the daily routine and they're that busy that they don't have any time to work on their personal development or Excel development. And I find that. And when a new person comes in, they come with new ideas, they're fresh. You know, they don't have that much work and they have that opportunity. But now with YouTube and all the other online courses and forums, even, you know, an 80 year old can learn Excel. And, and, and I've seen that. I've definitely seen that. So it's, there's no excuse now, is there? No, definitely not. Okay, so you were there for how many months? For six months? Yeah, so so that, for that instance, I was there for about eight months and I rotated out and I had already gotten this this uh, notion that I was good in Excel and that kind of just kept rolling with every department I kind of ro- rotated into. Mm-hmm. Um, and that being back in 2011, now I'm out of the rotational. I have kind of a permanent position within the company. Uh, it has a lot of visibility. And I, I got it because I specialize in Excel. That's kind of the main reason I got it. So it's it's a highly visible position. A lot of people know who I am and know that if they have problems, I'm the person. I mean, they don't they don't call IT if they have an Excel question. They they go straight to me. So Excel's definitely helped me uh, professionally. Well, let me tell you that IT has no idea about Excel. So um, <laughs> Very true. But based on my experiences, they have no idea. So you're still with that same company. You just went on to bigger and yes. better roles, correct? Correct. Okay. And what's your role at the moment? My official title is FP&A Financial Consolidation Analyst. Um, mm-hmm. So I do FP&A stands for Financial Planning and Analysis. So I kind of roll up the financial statements for the entire company for internal reporting. So all my stuff kind of gets fed directly to the executives and the board. So I, I kind of have to interact with all facets of the uh, the business to get all the data. And the directors, do they know you as the Excel guru? Has your legacy skyrocketed all the way up there to the board level? I would say it's probably to the VP okay. level. I mean, I work for a very large company, mm-hmm. so I don't I don't really interact with the board or the executives too much, even though they they see my work all the time. But okay. I actually got my nickname Chris Macro from a VP. So interesting. Um, yeah, it fed up there. <laughs> and that stayed with you, Chris Macro, because the first time that I met you, I thought your surname was Macro. Then I go, no, it can't be Macro. <laughs> it can't be Macro. Be too, too good to be true. It's too good to be true. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But I love it. You should actually change your your surname to Macro. I don't know that my wife would like that uh, name well, change. <laughs> well, I have two names, just like the Spanish. <laughs> like my wife is Spanish, and she has two names and my son has two names two surnames so um yeah that's okay chris macro newman there you go (laughs) that'll be cool that'll be cool so the company that you work for what does it do and how many people are involved in that company i work for a large manufacturing company i work at the the headquarters and we have about 300 people there and then there's a lot of facilities throughout the united states i think we have probably a total of around 3,000 employees. You should just skip the next level from financial planning analyst to finance director and go all the way to VP of Excel. <laughs> How would that sound? I'll have, to, I'll have to find a company with that position. So now just expand a bit upon your website, the spreadsheetguru.com and how that came about. Um, and you said it was launched in early 2014, so last year. And Yeah, so um, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty recent. And um, I kind of decided to develop this website through two reasons. One prior to this, I was involved on a lot of Excel forums and I I kind of got frustrated just answering the same question over and over. So that that was one frustration I was seeing. I was I was answering the same questions over and over again. And what questions were they about? It varied really. There's a lot of formula questions. Mm -hmm. I tended to try to concentrate on the VBA questions because I was just starting to get a hang of that. 
on the forums, if if anyone's ever been on them, you you get a uh, vast array of topics. But a lot a lot of like VLOOKUPs and match index formula type troubleshooting problems to kind of I, I mean basic for me, but some basic VBA people trying to to learn it and just not not understanding how it works. I was seeing a lot of that. And then I also noticed that people I was working for, I would tell them to maybe Google something if they're having trouble with it. And they really didn't like clicking on links to the forums where a lot of the answers are. And the reason why is because most of the time, if you click on a link to a forum, the question's very specific. And unless you know a lot about Excel and Especially if you're looking for a VBA question, I mean, you could click on a link and just be looking for one little piece and this person's asking a question about 20 different pieces. Yeah. So it can be very confusing. So I found a lot of my coworkers were just skipping the forum URLs and just looking for actual blogs or websites that had the answer. And a lot of a lot of stuff I guess I was seeing just wasn't documented in a uh, I guess user-friendly or beginner explanation way. So I was seeing a lot of that. So I, I kind of got to thinking one day and the bright idea came to make my own website. And that way, if I was answering questions on the forums, I, I could just point them to a article I'd written. And then uh, the topics that my coworkers were having trouble with, I could I could write about that and they would have a legitimate website they could click through and get their answer real quick. So that's that's kind of what inspired me to start it. And I wanted to kind of have the mission of the website to kind of guide people to be their own office gurus because I had, I had seen how it had impacted my professional career. And it wasn't, I mean, it took a lot of work, but it wasn't unattainable at all. So that's kind of been my, my little mini mission for the people that follow the the blog and the website on a regular basis. And the feedback that you get from your viewers or subscribers, have they um, you know, gone on to become Excel experts and VBA experts just like yourself? Yeah, I think so. I have a newsletter that kind of is my mini course on little Excel hacks that I use that aren't very popular or uh, known within mm -hmm. the analyst community. And I kind of walk them through that. I send them an email every other week with a, a tip and I get great feedback from that. And a lot of people will email me back saying, oh, I, I love your website. I've already told a couple of my coworkers about this and they're, they're loving it too. And I get great feedback from it. There's a huge gap in the Excel world and um, there should be more websites, I think, out there. And you know, you're working and in your spare time, you have this website. So, you know, well done on that Thank you. and um, I'm sure that you're going to have great success with her. So, uh, so you're an expert in VBA. What is VBA for those people who haven't used it before? So VBA stands for Visual Basic for Applications and it's, it's basically a computer language that allows you to automate tasks, specifically in Microsoft Office. Um, it, it can command stuff outside Office, but Microsoft kind of originally built it around its office suites. And I am no computer programming expert, um, but from what I've heard is that VBA is probably one of the easier languages to learn from because it is very intuitive since Microsoft kind of kind of designed the language to be for its office suite. So uh, that's that's it. And I don't want to get into too much detail, but it basically lets you write code to do tasks that you might do manually. We only have 30 minutes, so, you know, <laughs> if I gave you an hour, you can probably talk during that time just on what VBA yeah. does. So, um, no, that, that's awesome. Thanks for that. And I'm sure our listeners um, will get lots of value from your answer. Okay, over to the next question. How did you get to become an expert in VBA? Now, you said a little bit about your work when you first started. So, uh, you know, you were thrown in the deep end and you just had to learn it, correct? Correct. So, yeah, so I, I had all this crazy computer code in this file 
that was thousands and thousands of lines and I had to, uh, to start somewhere. So I think what I first did was I, I would try to just Google something. But what I, f- what I found most helpful was actually joining an Excel forum. And the one I typically recommend to my readership is Mr. Excel. That forum just has given me the fastest response rate um, out of any form out there on Excel. And I would, I would literally have a question, type it in. And a couple of minutes later, someone across the world would be giving me an answer and I could interact with all these other experts on VBA. And they kind of taught me, uh, different things. And it's all free, isn't it? And it's, and it's all free. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I would always joke. I don't know what these, what these people do for a living, but <laughs> nothing. Uh, they, they just, said, <laughs> they just enjoy, uh, helping people. And so it's, it's a really great community. I think it's, it's probably the largest Excel form out there. Um, definitely the most interactive one. So I, I definitely recommend that. And the URL is, it has some crazy URL, but if you just, uh, Google search, Mr. Excel or Mr. Excel forum, uh, it will, it will get you there. Yeah, I think it's uh, mrexcel.com. And on the left hand side, you have the forum. Uh, section. So you can just yeah. click on that and it'll take you there. Okay. In what situations would you use VBA? So I typically use VBA in two situations. One would be if I am doing repetitive tasks over and over again. Mm-hmm. So if I have to clean up the same data every day or every week, and manipulate it and put it in a pivot table. If I'm doing the same thing over and over again, I'll typically write some code that will just do it for me. So I don't, I don't have to do, I call it mind numbing work yeah. um, or, or work a five-year-old could do. Yeah. Um, it's just stuff that isn't impacting my, my job at all. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I get paid to do analysis. I don't get paid to click the mouse all day. Exactly. So it's like getting a file from your ERP system and then it gets downloaded onto Excel and it gets downloaded into a weird format. And then you will use uh, a macro just to clean that up, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the second thing would be if some sort of functionality didn't uh, exist in Excel. So a, a big one I see on the forums all the time is doing some sort of formula to determine if a cell has bold font in it or if the cell Mm -hmm. has a red fill in it. So there, there's no such thing as an if bold function in Excel, but you can create one in VBA if you absolutely need to. Wow. Um, So, so things like that you can definitely use VBA for. So things that you cannot do with a formula, a pivot table, conditional format, you can do with VBA. Yeah. That, I mean, once you know VBA, the sky's the limit for what you can do. You can literally do anything you can think of. That's absolutely right. And I think I'm good at Excel. I know I'm good at Excel. And you know what? I don't even know how to use VBA to the extent or to its full potential. And you don't have to be a VBA expert to be an Excel expert, just to, you know, to say that. But it just opens up more possibilities. And yeah, I mean, there is a there is a big caveat with VBA is and I, I definitely fell into this when I was teaching myself is once you understand how it kind of works, you want to do everything with VBA. And you kind of get in this mindset of coding, coding, coding to do this. And you forget that, oh, it might be easier to write a formula to do this. So there is kind of like a happy medium that you have to balance on if you should be using VBA or maybe a, an Excel formula to accomplish the same task. So it can be a little bit dangerous at times, but I, I mean, I've seen people use VBA to do stuff that would have been much simpler to do it with a formula. So knowing VBA doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're an expert, um, but it, it definitely does help in search, certain situations if it requires you to use it. True. And what is that weirdest thing that you've seen done with VBA? I don't know if I've seen too many weird things with VBA. Um, I, I haven't been looking for stuff like that. I think the, mostly the stuff I've seen that have been weird just been with Excel in general. That's I fine. Mean, there's yeah. a 
YouTube, I don't know if he's a star, but an artist on YouTube who will do like these ridiculous paintings in Excel and he just uses shapes and he manipulates them. And I mean, he's done a uh, portrait of Yoda from Star Wars and it looks real and it's I'm like and he's in Excel doing it. So I think his name or his uh, YouTube channel is called Suki Art. I'm sure you can put a, a link in the show notes for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then another cool, I I mean, it, it's kind of weird, but it's it's really cool at the same time. A while back, uh, this guy named Jordan Goldmeyer, he made this Excel spreadsheet that had like a 3D maze in it. And you could use your arrow keys to kind of go through the maze and try to navigate to get out of it. And it, it was mind blowing to see. I think he just used charts to make the 3D maze and it, it's it's really cool. But that stuff like that's just mind blowing to me that you can do that inside Excel. Yeah, Jordan Goma is awesome. And once again, you can find the links to this tutorial by visiting myexcelonline.com slash podcast. On your blog, you talk about Excel add-ins and you have a tutorial on how to create your first Excel add-in. Now, why did you decide to create this tutorial? So again, when I was learning VBA and I started getting into the more advanced stuff, I started making add-ins for my department that were specific to the needs of my coworkers. And it coming not from a computer program background, it was really hard for me to figure out how this was done. And it kind of inspired me to create this little tutorial and turn it into a blog post on how anyone can really do it as long as they have a good starting point. So I went ahead and did all the geeky behind the scenes programming stuff to set it up. And it's basically just a plug and chug where you can link your macros into it. You can use Microsoft's built-in icon library to get custom icons that throw it on the ribbon. Um, and it's really, really easy. And I'll have to read my, uh, so my favorite comment in the comment section on it was by a guy named Dan. He said, I never thought I would say this, Chris, but I created my first Excel add in today. You're a boss. Mm -hmm. So just, just knowing that I could put a tutorial out there where people in the same day who had never even thought they could make an ad and could just do it was really inspirational and made, made me feel good inside. And I saw that that tutorial and it's awesome and it's easy. You know, you always look at add-ins and you think, wow, it's hard. How do they do it? But it's not really that hard. It's only a few lines of code and Chris provides the code there. So you can actually download the workbook and, and put in the code and create your different icons and your different group names and, and labels. And pretty much within one hour, you can create your own Excel add-in. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to create my own Excel add-in because I'm, I was inspired by that post and I'll have it on my, on these show notes as well. It'd probably be probably an easy one, just a copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally if you have uh, macros that you use all the time, you can kind of link them in and and make your own uh, ribbon tab to just call them. All right, so I want to put uh, your link to that tutorial in, in the show notes, okay? So everyone can go there. They can go on to mikesalonline.com slash podcast and have a look at the, at the links to the show notes, okay? Now let's take a short break and we'll be back with your favorite Excel tips. Can you analyze this spreadsheet using Excel pivot tables? Sure, if you can show me how to. Introducing the Extreme Pivot Table Online course, which teaches you how to analyze business data and highlight key metrics so that you can make insightful business decisions, create interactive analytical dashboards that will reach top management, and set you apart from your peers, which will make you more important and increase your chances of a promotion or pay rise. Developed over 15 years through extensive professional use and including real business case studies, it is the ultimate pivot table course. With over 200 short downloadable video tutorials accessible online anywhere 24 seven. 12 month personal support if you ever get stuck and a 30 day money back guarantee. 
Visit myexcelonline.com today and give your professional development the boost it deserves. Okay, we're back with Chris's Excel favorites. All right, let's start with the first one. What is your favorite keyboard shortcut and what does it do? So my favorite shortcut is uh, control, shift, end. And what it does is it allows you to highlight your entire data range. So if you have data and let's say cell A1 to Z100, and you had your A1 cell highlighted and you did the control shift end, um, it would highlight all that data all the way to the end for you. So I do this a lot when I'm just doing copy and paste from maybe data I extracted from a database and I got to put it into a file, but I, I use it every day probably. So that's control shift end. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is your favorite Excel tip? So my favorite Excel tip is making people use the quick access toolbar with keyboard shortcuts. I actually did a post a while back about how people use the quick access toolbar with a bunch of different Excel people. I was surprised to find that a lot of these big name Excel guys, I can't remember if you were one of them or not, didn't really use the uh, quick access toolbar. Um, and I, I can't blame them entirely because I feel like, I mean, a lot of those people are, are were bloggers or consultants, so they don't really use Excel like in a corporate setting every day, but it's, it's a very powerful tool if you know how to use it right. And what's cool about the toolbar. And if, if you don't know what the toolbar is, it, it's up at the very top of your Excel window. And typically it just has your save button and your undo redo buttons up there. Yep. That's but you right. can actually put any functionality that would be in your, your ribbon up there too, or even like your, your macro codes that you wrote, you can call those from your quick access toolbar too. Um, but my favorite tip is to show people how they can use keyboard shortcuts to enact those buttons. And all you have to do is hit the alt key and you'll see numbers pop up. And basically I think it starts at one and yes, I'm not sure yes. what it does after nine, but um, I, I typically only use maybe one through four, one through five, because it gets a little awkward. Well, I'll tell you what it does after nine. It goes nine, and then it goes zero nine, and zero eight, and zero seven. Yeah, so that, that kind of gets ridiculous. But yeah. if you use like alt one through alt four, um, that's pretty reasonable to do with your left hand. And I'll, I'll put like my most heavily used functions up there, and I'll just call them. So I use paste values a lot, paste formats. So instead of having to go um, into the paste special button on the ribbon or do the crazy shortcut to open up the paste special dialog box, I can just do an alt one and do the paste values. So that's probably my favorite tip. And I, I usually tell people to put that paste values in that number one spot because I, I think pretty much everyone uses that in an analytical role. That's an awesome tip. That's an awesome tip. And you know what? I didn't know about that alt and one. I knew I knew that it worked um, on the ribbon, but in terms of calling up icons in the quick access toolbar, I never thought about using it. So that's an awesome, awesome tip. And also, if you want to add anything into the quick access toolbar, all you got to do is right click on any icon. For example, wrap text. Right click, and then the first option is add to quick access toolbar, and then it will get added um, on there. And if you press Alt, you'll see the numbers follow by that number, for example, one, two, three, and then it will do that command for you. You can never stop learning Excel, Chris. Very true. That's why Very I love true. it. That's why I love it. Or else I'll get bored. I'll get bored. If I know everything, I'll get bored and I'll give up on it. I'll go into something new, like, um, Excel for Mac or something like that. So, <laughs> all right. What is your favorite function and why? So uh, I had to think about this for a little bit. I didn't want to go with any cliche functions that are out there, like the V lookup or the index match. Um, so I'm going to go with the if error function. And the reason I chose this as my favorite function is because I use it all the time. And a lot of people that I work with didn't really know it existed because they learned Excel in Excel 2003 or prior. 
and that function did not exist in those uh, versions of Excel. I would come across spreadsheets where they would use the if function and then embed an is error in there. And I would have to go back to them like, you, you know there's an if error function now that you can use. So that's that's probably one of my favorites. I hate seeing the, the nasty NA uh, values appearing on spreadsheets because that's always a warning sign in, in my eyes. So I, I usually, if there's a chance of that happening, I'll, I'll wrap an if error around it. Okay, and then you wrap in the if error and it gives you the option to, um, instead of showing NA, you can show whatever you want. You can show blanks, you can show a number, or you can show text, correct? Correct. Now, what is one Excel add-in that you constantly use? So I'm I'm gonna have to refer to one of my add-ins. Go for it. Fantastic. Once you, once, once you know how to make add-ins, you kind of start writing them for stuff you need. So this add-in is actually uh, going to be available on my website to purchase come uh, sometime in July 2015, and I called it Sidekick. And what it is, is a user form that lets you do simple math to your selected range. So I'll get a lot of spreadsheets where dollars are in thousands and I need them in millions. So I'll have to go in and do like a like a pay special and and multiply them by a thousand and get them in the millions because since, since my position is consolidation, I'm getting data from all sorts of different departments and they don't always look at data apples to apples. So I'm always manipulating stuff to get them in the format I need to need to uh, present them in. So what this does is I can highlight data and a user form will pop up and I have it set to where it's in my Alt 3 position on the quick access toolbar so I can easily call it. And it will let me divide by any number, multiply, subtract, add. It will also let me zero out the data if I'm doing like an input sheet and I need to zero out the numbers. Another big one is switching signs. So in my situation, the accounting world, revenue is a credit, so it's always a negative sign. But in the finance world, if we're getting revenue, that's that's a good guy, so that's that's positive. So I'm always constantly switching my data from positives and negatives. So this this little add-in lets me do that in in seconds. Wow. So I, I use it every day. Dude, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I think a lot of people are gonna get value out of this add-in and well I can just visualize it now. When you get all that data in within press of a button, bang, it just changes the way that your that your data looks. Do you also have the option to put in the word mil and thous and THS or anything like that? No, I don't I don't have a built-in number formatting mm-hmm. into it. I actually have personal macros that do that for me as another function, but that might if that there's enough demand for it. When it comes out, I might think about doing that. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's the best thing about the add-ins is you can always upgrade to it and make it better. So once you purchase the add-in, you have future updates that are free. So, uh, you know, based on user feedback, correct? Correct. Man, Sidekick. I love the name. And why do you you think of Sidekick? Because he's your sidekick. He's your buddy, yeah? It's, yeah. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to remember. So the, the tagline... That I'm using for it is every hero needs one. Every hero, so, <laughs> every Excel hero needs one. <laughs> every superhero needs Easy. one. Yeah, exactly. Easy, like, right? Like <laughs> Batman and Robin. No, yep. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> My son is into all those superheroes, and you know I'm getting back into them now, and I love it. All right. Um, apart from your blog and also my blog, what is a great online resource for learning Excel? So I think I, I mentioned it earlier, but I, I definitely would highly recommend joining an Excel forum. And Mr. Excel is definitely a good one. I also use VBAexpress.com. They have a great forum as well. I typically go to them when I have more advanced Excel problems because they have a lot of Excel MVPs and people that are really, really smart that are on that board. But it does take a little bit to hear back from them, depending on your question. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're just learning Excel or VBA, I definitely recommend the Mr. Excel because you'll get near instant feedback. Awesome resources. Thanks for that. If you could recommend one Excel book for our listeners, what would it be? So I'm gonna go with one I that just recently came out. Again, it's by uh, Jordan Goldmeyer. He's the guy we mentioned with the 3D Maze, 
and it's called Excel Essentials. And it, it's more of a intermediate to advanced book. And it's not it's not going to be like a guy that tells you every single function and feature in Excel. It's more a little bit more theory and how to set up proper spreadsheet. He goes into user forms and using controls on your spreadsheet. I mean, it's it's very interesting. He he always has great perspectives and it's it's a very easy read and it's not too many pages too. So I would I would highly recommend that book if you're kind of interested in that stuff. Now I've got that book here and as you said it's an easy read. It's small. It's you know it's a uh, it's only a few pages, not a few pages, but it's not like the Excel Bible which has you know nearly a thousand pages. And that's the best mm-hmm. thing about it is all right now you can find the links to this book and everything we've been chatting about today including tutorials on Chris's favorite shortcuts and tips by visiting myexcelonline.com slash podcast. All right, Chris, we've come to the end of the show. Now, Chris, let's say it's my first time ever seeing Excel and I need to learn the most important features of Excel within one week for an important job interview. With all the Excel knowledge that you know today, what will be the quickest way for me to start learning Excel? So I'd probably focus on some key features to research. So I would probably start learning the Excel formulas. I would learn pivot tables and I'd probably start learning some of the basic shortcuts um, or the more popular shortcuts. So the way I would recommend doing that is to use your good friend Google to start researching that. There's a lot of great websites that have blog posts, including mine, out there on some of those topics. And I would also join forum and just start asking questions about things. And there's thousands and thousands of people on these forums that will just be your teacher for free and would be more than happy to answer your questions. So I think being able to have that interaction on the forums and being able to have so many experts at your fingertips would really get you the knowledge you need in time for that, uh, that interview. Awesome, awesome tips, awesome tips. And what will be the best Excel tool that a beginner should focus on? So I think I think when you're beginning, learning the functions without the the dialog box, the function builder, but that that really slows you down. So if you can kind of learn what the inputs are starting out, that's that's a huge win for you. I would say next, learning that VLOOKUP function and knowing the the power that it can do is uh, very key and also learning the pivot table. I think VLOOKUP and pivot tables are kind of your gateway from becoming a beginner to an intermediate user. So I think those are those are both huge features that Excel has that are very, very powerful. Very powerful. And, you know, not many people know about pivot tables and, you know, there are many good courses out there. And there's one called the Extreme Pivot Table Course, I believe. And um, Oh, yeah? So so you can get that. If you go on my website, mikesonline.com, and you go on to the Pivot Table Course link, you can have a look at that course. It's, uh, you know, over 200 video tutorials and the most comprehensive pivot table course out there. So just finally, what is the best way for our listeners to connect with you so the best way is to sign up for my newsletter and the url for that is just www.thespreadsheetguru.com slash newsletters or there's various buttons on my website you can click to sign up for that and that kind of gets me in the direct contact with you i'll send you all my hacks and tips that I don't publish on the website because they're they're more geared toward people that want to improve their efficiency and they're kind of just tips that I've kind of gathered over the years and kind of the stuff I wish I would have known when I was starting out so that's a great way and and I interact with a lot of people I'm always checking the responses from that and it's it's a good time all right, Chris, thank you very much for being part of this inaugural Maiden My Excel Online podcast. Mate, I appreciate your time. You are definitely a spreadsheet guru, and I'm sure that our listeners have learned lots from you today. And, uh, buddy, thank you very much, and I appreciate you being on the show. And um, hopefully, uh, I can have you back one more time. I'd love to do that. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of the My Excel Online Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and share this with your colleagues so they can reach their full Excel potential. You can also visit myexcelonline.com slash podcast for show notes as well as John's online Excel courses and free tutorials to help you stand out from the crowd. Until next time, keep excelling. Thank you.